This is a video on reassembly of a taken apart Nintendo. I have a video on just cleaning the board and modifying the chip. However, uh, I had a customer need one, so I ended up using it, so I have to redo a different one for this video. So, essentially, again, using the oven cleaner, or the stove cleaner, I should say. You get the black off of the board. So you get it so it's nice and clean on the board. Alright. And use alcohol. Clean off the cleaning solution. I have a more in-depth video on doing this that I'm not going to take down, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking through this, but essentially I am pulling the fourth pin. On the S10 chip. So now it's modified for that. Take the new 72 pin connector, slide it on the board as such. Forgot a couple of pieces in there. Alright. Right, the system here. Take the control of ports. The short one goes in port number one. There's a longer cable that goes in port number two. Power and reset button slides in just how it's sitting properly. Got the bottom shielding, just line it up. The game tray. This can be difficult sometimes depending on how tight the pin connector and everything is. I'm going to be careful putting it together, but it's not. Once it goes, it usually goes just fine. 
make sure that you line this up on the bottom side. If you don't, when you try to attach it, everything will be kind of off a bit and it'll take you a minute to figure out why. Just a pain in the butt. All right, once that's all lined up, take the power cable. Attach that. The longer one goes on the left side of the board, the shorter one goes on the front of the board. All right. Then you want to route your cables so that they're not getting pinched. cables I do, or first uh, pieces I put in, screws, are on the new 72 pin connector, the long ones, which is the first one, or the middle one I should say, not the first one, but the first screw I put in. Holds the entire thing in place, goes right into the bottom of the unit, so if essentially you have a unit there. Uh, then I put in the front. All right. Now that I've got that, I'm going to pause the video and move it in to where I do my testing and we'll come back and finish assembly. Here it is, pardon the noise, but I'm not shutting off my ceiling fans because it's pretty hot here today. If you watch my videos, you see I play the same game all the time, but that's because it's my tester game. So. There we go. So the system we just put together, that is the European version ice block. Controller port is working. Board is working. S10 disabled properly. Pretty good system. Uh, I've had a couple of questions about uh, Famicom games. I play some Famicom. Uh, I use, uh, can't think of his name, but there's another YouTube guy that uh, showed me how to do the Game Genie. Before that, I always tied them in with fishing line and drug them out, and uh, I still even have some fishing line on there, but I use the Game Genie now. It's a good way to get your Famicom games to play. Um, you don't need the Nest 10 modification to play uh, Famicom games. What you do need is, of course, a uh, uh, Famicom adapter, which you can get in on eBay. Uh, however, one thing you should know is that it goes in upside down, which uh, some people have some problem with. Anyway, you slide that in. Turn that on. So Rockman 5 or Mega Man 5. That's how that works. Now I'm going to pause this video and take you back out and we're going to finish assembly. Thanks. Alright. Now I'm going to finish
finished the assembly. Uh, the reason I'm doing it out here in the sun is because I didn't want to shut my fans off, although it's kind of hot out here, of course, as well. All right. Oh, wait. Sorry. Got to step ahead of myself. Uh, I secure the last two pieces on the... Seventy-two pin connector. Shielding on. Actually, secure the power supply too. Sometimes when they don't come with all the screws, these screws are impossible to find. I don't like to use aftermarket type screws. I have not found one that fits just right. And I'm more, more afraid of them coming loose uh, or breaking the plastic because um, Nintendo used their own screws. So if, they, if a system comes with a few extra or a few less screws, or never extra, but a few less screws, then sometimes I'll leave these empty. Uh, a lot of the times they come with no screws holding the cover on or one screw holding the cover on or it's the wrong type of screw. Uh, so when Rhea, this shielding is just held to the plastic, it doesn't really do anything except for cover this. So if you can't uh, find all the screws, uh, then you know these ones here are less important. So I'll do like one or two. Uh, I'll try to hit the ones that go through the board. This doesn't go through the board, it just holds it there. So it's not as an integral to the working of the system. Uh, so, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do on some of those. If I have extra screws, then I, of course, put every screw in. In this system I had, uh, every screw came with it, so I'm able to put it back together that way. Because, of course, I prefer that it is. 100% back the way it was uh, when it came from the factory. All right, take that, take the cover, line the cover up, flip it over. six screws in the bottom, two for the uh, two little silver screws. You want to be careful when you put this in. Uh, you can, if you over tighten it, this black plastic piece cracks really easily. Um, you have to uh, uh, be careful with it and I mean that's one of the pieces that I find that's broken on these a lot when I get them is somebody has over tightened that uh, in the past. This screw here I did last, and the reason I did that 
is I want to tell you, you want to tighten this one, but you don't want to over tighten it. If you over tighten this screw, it can sometimes affect your tray working, and your tray won't stay down. So I like to tighten it. I don't over tighten any of them really, but in that one, if you over tighten it, sometimes your tray won't stay in the down position. Uh, and then you just loosen it and it'll work every time. But there you go. That is a completed Nintendo unit. Except for one final touch. Uh, I like to spray it with a little pledge or, well, furniture polish in this case. Um, must have been out of pledge. And I take it and just wipe it down. Just to make it look a little shinier. Uh, it doesn't work like it does on a Nintendo 64 or a darker unit like that, uh, but it can make it pop. So there you go. There is a completed Nintendo unit.